morning, everyone, and thank you. It is my great pleasure to be here as part of Brampton's first TEDx event. And as Mohammed told you, then I am the very proud CEO of Brampton Library, an absolutely wonderful organization in this city. Now, on this very exciting day in a schedule full of entrepreneurs and engineers and large thought, big thinkers, thought leaders, when you looked at the schedule and saw that there was a librarian, how many people thought, hmm, librarian? Does anybody still go to the library? Come on, how many people thought? Does anybody still go to the library? Oh, you guys are being very kind. Thank you very much, thanks. Well, I'm happy to tell you that in fact, they do. They come to the library by the thousands, and not just in Brampton, but in public library facilities right across our country. It's a really exciting time for public libraries, and I hope that I'm going to spend the next few minutes dispelling some old stereotypes, breaking some myths, and reinventing the idea of what a public library can, should, be, and is and really taking public libraries to the next level. So, as you know, public libraries have been around for centuries, literally centuries. And we've done a, a pretty good job, if I say so myself, over the last 20 years, our service model has been completely disrupted. It's a whole new world order, particularly from the time when I got into librarianship. Believe me, I remember the days, and I think some of you may too, remember the days when the librarians sat behind the desk, waited for people to approach, and then we would consult our volumes and volumes and stacks and stacks of reference materials that we needed to provide you with answers. Do you remember those days? Yeah. How many people here have fond memories of the public library as a kid? Did you come to the library with your parents, your grandparents? You came for story time? Do you remember looking for that next book in your favorite series, whether it was Hardy Boys or Goosebumps, Babysitter's Club? any curious George fans in the audience, right? We have those warm, nostalgic memories of what the library was all about. Did it look like that? No, I venture to say it didn't. This is uh, Brampton Library's Chinkuzi branch. We closed that library for nearly a year last year, invested a couple million dollars to bring it up to speed, bring it up to, up to grade for what a 21st century library should be. And this really is a next level library. Back in the day when we were sitting behind the desk waiting for you to come so we could dole out the information, because after all, that's where you went to get information. Mind-blowing thought, that was before the internet, and it was certainly before Google. We were in the business of providing content providing access to content, because that's what we did. Information was expensive. Not everyone had access to all of those volumes and volumes that we collected as a collective on behalf of the community. You'll notice that you don't see any librarians with buns and glasses sitting behind a desk there. Now, I still wore the pearls, but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll myth bust one step at a time. What you see is a very busy 21st century library full of computers, full of technology, and full of people who, yes, are there to, uh, in some cases, go be in search of content, who are in search of information. We still have that expert help there, ready to jump in if you need assistance, but nowadays, Libraries are much more about content creation and facilitating content creation. Does this look like a library to you? Yeah, so I've got a couple nods. Well, this is the same library. This is the recording studio at our Chinkuzi Library. And some of you may be surprised to know that recording studios are featured in many urban public libraries across Canada. 
So rather than sitting behind desks and waiting for people to come and doling out information, our skilled and knowledgeable library staff are assisting creative individuals to create their own content, whether it be podcasts or music production. People come in to record their, their oral histories of their families and preserve them. That's what public libraries are all about. And it's not just recording studios, it's maker spaces as well. So we've become experts and facilitators in 21st century literacies. So yes, I agree with Mohammed. we all love to read and I still love to hold a book. But the 21st century digital literacies are what will be really significant to take our communities to the next level. Our maker spaces are filled with equipment like 3D printers and scanners and vinyl cutters and laser cutters that you can create all sorts of your own material for whatever need you may have in your life. We assist people with free 3D printing, everything from elementary school kids who come in after school and they 3D print their school assignments, to local entrepreneurs who come in and they 3D print a prototype of their invention to take to market, right through to the person I talked to last week who had broken the knob off on her dryer at home and needed a new knob for her dryer. So not only were our knowledgeable staff able to find the online file for the production of that particular piece, they then helped her 3D print it out of plastic and home she went to put that knob on her dryer and turn it on. So not only did she save about $150 in a service call and cost, but what an incredible story and what an incredible new vision of what a public library is and can be. We serve and support and facilitate the creative economy in a way that no other not-for-profit community organization does. Okay, well, just a little name dropping. Imagine how proud we were last year when Justin Trudeau um, came to Gore Meadows, one of our branch libraries, to make a significant federal announcement. And why, you might ask, would the Prime Minister come to a library to make a significant announcement? Because he understands that libraries are community hubs, safe and democratic spaces where everyone is welcome with open arms. What's he doing there? Can everyone see what he's playing with? Lego, that's right. The Prime Minister and a bunch of really engaged kids and their parents are playing with Lego. Who would have thought that Lego Mania would be one of our most popular programs at the library? The collaborative spirit of kids coming together to build, to cooperate, to engineer, is the building blocks for the next level of program beyond this, which is Lego Robotics. And we all know that coding and programming are essential 21st century literacies that our kids are going to need to be successful in our next level communities. We offer dozens of STEM programming. Is everyone familiar with this acronym STEM, science, technology, engineering, math? We offer dozens of STEM programming programs and they're attended by thousands of kids and their families building on the curriculum in a safe, warm, and welcoming space that really is contributing to the next level. So it's not just in Brampton. We'll move outside of Brampton for a few minutes. There is a, an enormous renaissance in public library building happening right across our country. Do these, are these pictures familiar to every, anyone? Has anyone visited the Halifax Public Library? That's the one in the top corner absolutely amazing facility that's been open for a couple years now. It has completely transformed not only their downtown, but really the entire ring around the downtown. Iconic archi architecture, as you can see, it's meant to look like a stack of books. That top floor is a very cool coffee lounge with views of the harbor. Over one million people 
came through the doors of that library in its first year of operations. Amazing. It's become a tourist destination in its own right, to say nothing of all the activity that happens inside. Makerspace, recording studio, all the things that we've already been talking about. The bottom corner, you'll see the Calgary Public Library, scheduled to open in the fall of this year, a $245 million investment that will be another game changer for that city's downtown. Completely transformative. You can see in this architect's model, there is an LRT stop right inside the building. The trains will come in, deposit people, pick them up right inside the building. Why are cities making this kind of investment in public libraries? Because they understand the return on that investment for their communities is significant. This, this is Brampton's next level public library. This is the Springdale branch of the Brampton Library. I love this picture. I think it's absolutely stunning. We opened this building in the spring of this year, and not unlike Halifax, we haven't welcomed a million people yet, but we have welcomed over a thousand people a day, seven days a week come into this branch. It's absolutely amazing. The walls are all glass. So as you walk by or drive by, it is literally a beacon in the community. People are drawn in. They see the activity inside. They see the beautiful architecture, and they want to be part of it. So this is an excellent investment. I'm going to leave you with this thought. Can anyone guess of every tax dollar that you pay in Brampton, every dollar of taxes, how much of that dollar comes to support public library service? Just shout it out. Any thoughts? Three cents. That's a good guess. It's too high. That's one third too much. Two cents of every tax dollar goes to support public library service in Brampton. And when you look at this facility, when you think about the amazing um, equipment that's available and our friendly and knowledgeable staff, I think you'll agree it's a very good investment of taxpayer money. I'm delighted. Thank you very much. I hope I've used this opportunity to dispel some myths and help you to understand what Next Level Libraries are all about. Thank you.